A big thanks to Brabura by Hearthstone Outdoor for sponsoring this episode. Last weekend, I discovered something that I really need to share with you. And I really, really need you to give this a try. So don't be judging. Just watch till the end of the video and then try it. I promise you and then you promise me. And together, we're going to make the world a better place. Let's go. These are two chuck steaks. I cut these two chuck steaks out of the primal cut myself. That makes these chuck steaks one of the cheapest chuck steaks that you can find. So if you need this, go to your butcher, ask them for the whole thing, cut up the steaks yourself, and then you end up with these super cheap but very delicious steaks. First, I'm going to make the Pitmaster X Texas style beef rub. And of course, I've written that recipe down for you on the website. Link is down below. Now I can put my seasoning on my steak. At least that's what you thought I was going to do. I'm not going to put it on the steak just yet because I haven't done prepping it. I am going to take this piece of paper and put it underneath my steak. Then take another one, put it on top of the steak. Are you ready for this? <laughs> I'm going to hit it. Oh yeah, feels so good. This do I always with my wife. This do I always with my children. I'm gonna smash this and you gotta put in some effort. I must admit it's quite the workout, but I already went from this thick of a steak to this thick of steak. Now you might wonder, are you going insane, Pitmaster No, 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 no. Trust me, it's gonna be freaking amazing. I'm gonna beat this a little bit more and once you understand why I did it? You're gonna love it. You're gonna do the same thing. Woo, look at this. It became three times larger than it used to be and three times less thick. And that's exactly what I needed to happen. Don't get me wrong. I made a whole video where I was talking about not beating your octopus because tenderizing your meat by beating it doesn't make any sense. And that's also the reason I didn't beat this to tenderize it. It's going to be just as tough. I just want it to be flat. Now I can season it with a Pitmaster X Texas beef rub. Because remember, you larger the surface and flatten it out, which means you're gonna have more seasoning on it and you don't need to put too much on it. This is the Barbura by Hearthstone flat top griddle. And it's one of my favorites because it has a cast iron plate with an MI coating. And that MI coating makes sure it doesn't rust, it doesn't need any seasoning, it's maintenance free and you get a lifetime warranty. Do I need to say more? Now let's fire it up. Two burners on to get one hot zone and one burner off to have a safe zone. And this is my first ingredient. With a little bit of oil on the flat top griddle, I'm gonna place this ham on the hot side of the grill. I know, I know, this is a bit crazy. Where did the ham come from? And why are we cooking ham and not steaks? Well, I was in Paris and I had a sandwich there. Normally, if we're cooking ham, we always use honey and mustard as a sauce. It's just the greatest combination. However, the French do it a little different. And I thought they're up to something. So I bought a ham and I'm gonna show you exactly what they do. And for that, I'm gonna be roasting my ham first, getting a little bit of crust with a little bit of oil, let it fry, let it build up some flavor. And while it's doing that, I'm going to be grilling my chuck steak. So moving it over to the colder side, letting it slowly roast. And then I'm gonna go over here, a little bit more oil, put my chuck steaks on. And I wanna get as large of a surface on these chuck steaks as I can. Just letting them lay right here and building up flavor. Now the goal here is not to cook the chuck steaks, I just need a crust. The cooking parts comes later on. Once I build up that crust, it's time to flip. I'm looking for that nice brown Maillard effect. That is the caramelization of the meat, making it sweet and very, very flavorful. That light brown is the gold of flavor. Oh, that ham looks so good. <laughs> now, of course, I want to roast it on all sides, warm it up a little bit. And every time I got a little bit of that roasted ham with color on it, I'm just gonna slice off a thin bit of it, lay it on the cold side, and then roast the rest of it, building up more flavor on each slice. In the meantime, the chuck steaks are still building up crusts and flavor. That is what I'm looking for, that beautiful dark crust, the frying of the steak, 
This is crispy stuff. All the goodness is right there. These are ready to be taken off. These steaks aren't done cooking yet. If you can see right now, they just look like chuck steaks. A little mangled up by getting beaten. Now I'm going to need flavor on the inside. But I'm going to make them even bigger. Make sure you use a very sharp knife like this one. And this, by the way, is the new Forge Katai knife. Oh, look at that. As you can see, not done cooking yet. I'm going to turn this inside out and then I'm going to put on the next layer of flavor. And that's why I got this beautiful French camembert. Camembert from Normandy. I'm going to slice this into thin slices. The outside, you just might as well. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Let me address the elephant. French cheeses are good. Dutch cheeses are better. We, as Dutch guys, we make number one cheeses in the world. The French, they're just like, just below our level. But still good cheese. Slice it up nice and thin. And let's make a promise to eat every fourth slice you make by yourself. Mm. Step two. Place it with the raw side down to the cutting board. Start layering on the cheese. Then get some ham. Start layering that on the cheese. And that cheese is gonna melt. Now, as you might notice, this is a whole big blob of goodness. Now, we can't just eat it as it is. We need to make this look good. Let's cut this up into reasonable sizes. And as the final step, I'm going to wrap them up into tortilla leaves. This is going to make it very easy for me to hold them together, to cook them and to have something to serve them in. So one more touch of the hot plate of the barbura and they have a beautiful crunchy crust and are ready to be eaten. <laughs> that looks really freaking delicious. Cheese steak madness. And invented by the French. It's kind of weird to get like a beautiful dish like this out of France. And it's not really like a French dish at all. It's like a Dutch guy stealing something, mixing it up with other stuff and putting cheese in it. I love it. I love the way the French think. And I love the way that we now have a chuck steak filled with ham and cheese rolled up in a tortilla. And we can eat it as a snack. Mm.